Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, April 18, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight. So these people who hold themselves out to be patriots are not. They're nothing more than domestic terrorists. Violent extremism has been with us uh, in many forms, uh, whether it was a parent seeing a kid being more confrontational. Domestic terrorist rhetoric kicks into high gear. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. They really are teaching government people, they talk like this, they go, everything's fine. Parents might see uh, sudden personality changes in their children at home uh, becoming more confrontational than usual. That was Obama's Homeland Security Advisor warning parents that they need to be suspicious of their own children. Because as far as the state's concerned, your children are now potential terrorists. That was Lisa Monaco. She's the White House counter-terror chief. And she says confrontational children could be terrorists, urging parents to look for warning signs that could indicate a future terrorism suspect. Now, she replaced John Brennan last year in overseeing Homeland Security's activities. And she says... Parents need to be suspicious of sudden personality changes in their children at home. So basically, this is every teenager in America. Now, she laments the fact that the government is rarely in a position to observe these early signals. Ooh, not for long. They can't wait to be able to get into your home and get their little nanny state watching over your kids as they grow like they're doing in the UK. Now, she encourages parents to act as watchdogs to detect radicalization in line with President Obama's goal of combating homegrown extremism. But that's just it. I mean, this label that they're using of domestic terrorism, is it's, such, it's painted with such a broad brush. Basically, your children are being suspended from school for pointing their finger like a gun or for chewing their Pop-Tart in the shape of a gun. And they're being suspended or expelled. They're being socially conditioned to accept that they are the criminals. We are all now domestic terrorists. The only people who aren't the criminals are those who are running the empire, making up these arbitrary laws. We have the MIAC report a few years ago, which was labeling Ron Paul supporters and libertarians and gun owners, Christians, returning veterans, all those people are terrorists. A Homeland Security study went even further in 2012, demonizing Americans who are suspicious of centralized federal authority. And if you're reverent of individual liberty, you are an extremist. So if you are a person who believes that you are free, that we have such a thing as individual liberty, you are an extremist. And this is where they're going with this. This is where they're conditioning. It's part of the plan to make everyone a criminal except the state. They're really upping the ante here with this. And Homeland Security, which was supposed to help fight against Al Qaeda, it's now turned inward. It's been converted into a system that's going to be waging a domestic war against political enemies. These are the enemies right here. It's not Al Qaeda. It's people who oppose the politics that are taking place in the country. We the people and they're going to use this culture of intimidation in order to condition people to obey whatever laws they set in place and at least that's what they tried to do in Nevada there uh, with the standoff with Bundy they hauled in a fully militarized Bureau of Land Management surrounded his property with assault rifles I mean they could have went through the court but instead they wanted to use this culture of intimidation to force him to stand down they wanted to steal his his property and then when Bundy and a whole bunch of supporters didn't back down they label them domestic terrorists and this is coming straight from Harry Reid who we exposed as being directly involved with the land grab there he has to spin it around and use this huge threatening language of domestic terrorism saying that Bundy and all of his supporters were people who wanted to get women and children killed had automatic weapons, and as the, one of the former sheriffs in Arizona said, and we had children and women lined up because what, if anyone got hurt, we wanted to make sure they got hurt first because we wanted the federal government hurting women and children. This is the deal, and it's not a good one. So these people who hold themselves out to be patriots are not. They're nothing more than domestic terrorists. And I think that we are a country that people should follow the law. 
So is there any reason for Harry Reid to be using such loaded language? He knows exactly what he's doing by calling them domestic terrorists and reiterating that term, domestic terrorists. He is basically a straight up mob boss who just put a hit out on the rancher's head. By calling him a domestic terrorist, law enforcement are already being trained to see domestic terrorists as the enemy. And then he's tying it in, you know, here we have this cattle rancher and his family, they were surrounded first by the armed federal agents. They surrounded their ranch first and were pointing assault rifles at them. These are the federal agents who think that they are above the law. No one disputes this law. They just say, oh, well, it's the law. Nobody disputes how this law came about or, you know, why Bundy decided to fight against it for all these years in court. They want everyone else to be subject to the laws while they themselves want to be a law unto themselves. They destroyed Bundy's property and they bragged about it. They pointed assault weapons at peaceful protesters. And rather than take it up with the courts, which is what they could have done, they used this culture of intimidation. And, you know, they're not the only federal agency that's ready to use these SWAT tactics to take their political enemies out. In fact, we had a story of a California man who was raided. A SWAT came into his home to raid his family. They put his children, 3, 5, and 11, in the cop car because his ex-wife wasn't current on her student loan bills. They sent in a full SWAT team in riot gear over student loan bills. And this is why people are afraid. This is why people don't trust the government. Why are these agencies in full on SWAT gear? Now, here's what Rand Paul told Fox News about Harry Reid using this dangerous rhetoric and government overreach. Is there any reason to call Americans domestic terrorists? No, I think what we should all, should all be calling for is for calmer heads to prevail. I don't want to see violence on either side. There is a legitimate constitutional question here about whether the state should be in charge of endangered species or whether the federal government should be. But I don't think calling people's names is going to calm this down. I think it's liable to stir it up. And then we also reported earlier this week about Glenn Beck using even more dangerous language to dis describe Cliven Bundy and those peaceful protesters and all of the supporters that came out. He interviewed Cliven Bundy and said, oh, were you one of those sovereign citizens? And Bundy didn't even know what he was talking about. He thinks that, you know, if you say, are you a domestic terrorist, he's almost taking it as a compliment because here he's feeling like he stood up against tyranny. And yeah, I guess if I'm going to go against this tyrannical government, then yeah, maybe they won't like what I'm all about. But he doesn't even understand and how dangerous these terms are and how they're trying to make him their fall guy. Here's Cliven Mundy's response. You know, I, I say, Harry, I guess you are right. We are upset uh, citizens and uh, we are, uh, I guess, in a riot-type mood. But we are doing it in a peaceful way with a lot of, you know, lots of inspiration and love and a lot of courage. And that's how Cowboy is able to fa face Harry's army and uh, back them down. It's not because we're uh, uh, militant. That's right. You know, uh, uh, yeah, I, riot type thing. It's because we we have faith and we, we're looking for freedom and liberty. And there's a reason why it's so dangerous and reckless to be tying Clive and Bundy and his supporters in with the sovereign citizens movement. They've really been ramping up this rhetoric for years about how dangerous the sovereign citizens are. 60 Minutes did a hit piece a couple of years ago demonizing this group and basically they pointed out how the police were trained to expect if they rolled up on a sovereign citizen that they were going to be hit with an assault rifle and to just act as if their life was in imminent danger and so they're they're working this angle tying in all types of conservative groups we've got the christians returning vets um, libertarians. They're basically trying to tie anyone who is for liberty in with this dangerous domestic terrorist group. Here's President Obama in 2011 talking about the lone wolf scenario and how that's even more dangerous now than Al Qaeda. That's America's number one threat. The, the risk that we're especially concerned of right now is uh, the lone wolf terrorist. Uh, somebody with a single weapon uh, being able to carry out uh, wide-scale massacres of the sort that we saw uh, in Norway recently. Uh, you know, when you've got one person who uh, is deranged or uh, driven by a, a hateful ideology, uh, they can do a lot of damage, and it's a lot harder to trace those lone wolf uh, operators. 
So they've really been gearing America up for a while, preparing people to just mind control them to understand that patriots are these dangerous domestic terrorists tying everyone who is a, an enemy of their politics. These are the people that you should be afraid of. And they're really using the situation that happened in Nevada as the very thing to help apply even more pressure. They wanted those people to fire on the Bureau of Land Management. They wanted those people to react with guns because then they could say, see, see, we told you these people were terrorists. They were standing up you know, against our Bureau of Land Management who wasn't doing anything. You know, They backed down because these people were trying to hurt women and children. And that's just what they're gonna keep on pushing, keep on pushing, uh, ramp this up so that people will basically beg them, please protect us from the patriots, they're so dangerous, please bring in martial law and protect us. And then they're going to roll out their latest form of control. That's why they're making sure that any coverage that comes out about the Nevada situation, it's, it's spun in a way that's like, those people are terrorists, so don't you attempt standing up to tyranny like they did, or you are going to be a terrorist just like them. And like we said, the situation that happened was just a battle. They almost make it seem like we won the battle, but the war is not over, and it's going to really escalate, and especially if they keep throwing around these dangerous terms. It's going to make a lot of people angry. Here we have the LA Times just last year, again, attacking the patriots. Peril from patriots. The U.S. needs to keep a close watch on the growing threat of homegrown extremist groups. They're not jihadists. They are white, right-wing Americans, nearly all with an obsessive attachment to guns, who may represent a greater danger to the lives of American civilians than international terrorists. The, the white Al-Qaeda, I mean, this is where they're going with this. And they go on to say the groups should be closely monitored, even if it means shifting some homeland security funds to, you know, the hunt for foreign terrorists, shifting them so they can go hunt domestic terrorists, white gun-loving Americans who are the new <laughs> white Al-Qaeda, the white jihadists here. And they say that they're, most of them are conspiracy theorists who believe that the UN is working to take away property rights and impose socialism on us all. Meanwhile, that's exactly the situation in Nevada under the guise of the, the Endangered Species Act. They shut down access to the land and instead, they rent this property out to foreign companies. So yes, that's not a conspiracy theory. That is a conspiracy fact. If you care to just do a little digging, you could find that. But see, I'm not even allowed to talk about these completely factual things because now I sound like a domestic terrorist. And that's their plan. They want to brand any speech that speaks out against tyranny as terrorism, just like they use the Endangered Species Act to shut down access to the land because of these endangered desert tortoises. Now they're going to use legislation to shut down free speech on the internet. Uh, legislation is being proposed to update the role the internet, radio, and TV play in encouraging hate crimes and hate speech, which again, just like their definition of domestic terrorism is very broad, hate speech too has a very broad definition depending on whomever is in charge and wants to decide that that should be penalized. Obviously, anyone with political speech that they find unacceptable is going to be labeled hate speech or inciting some sort of a hate crime. If you think that the government is getting too big, well now you're anti-government. And that's exactly how they're going to do this. They're just gonna continue pushing this legislation, pushing, pushing, and it's all about silencing political enemies. And we have a lot of people that call into the show and say, oh, well, you took down my YouTube comment and all I said was that I wanna start shooting these people and it's time to get out the guns. That is not what we're calling for. That's what they want you to do. That's how they want you to respond so that they can then impose martial law. That is not what we're trying to do here at InfoWars. And you've got to understand that that's exactly how the media is going to spin it. They're going to take that, twist it around, pull everyone in the liberty movement into these more radicalized groups, just like they did with the Tea Party. The real Tea Party was a great and